So today, I would like to take the opportunity to tell you about obesity across the life course. I'm Assistant Associate Professor Jennifer Baker. I'm from the University of Copenhagen, and I'm also for, from the Center for Clinical Research and Disease Prevention in Copenhagen, Denmark. I serve as the co-chair for the Childhood Obesity Task Force for the European Association for the Study of Obesity. The take-home message I'm going to tell you right now, far too many children and adolescents are overweight or obese. This harms their future cardiometabolic health. However, if we can help them achieve a healthier weight before they become adolescents, we can prevent these negative long-term consequences. Worldwide, global, globally, overweight and obesity are a challenge. Within the European region, one in three 11-year-olds is overweight or obese. Worldwide, this equates to more than 50 million girls and 74 million boys. The magnitude of the problem is immense. Alarmingly, children are becoming overweight or obese at progressively younger ages as well. If we think about this from the life course perspective, if this overweight or obesity is established already in childhood, that means this child is going to be exposed to the negative metabolic consequences for a longer period of time, which also means diseases may emerge earlier than ever before. When we think about these diseases, non-communicable diseases, we typically think of them as diseases of middle age. This isn't the case anymore, largely attributable to the emergence of childhood obesity. Obesity in childhood harms health. There's numerous concurrent consequences. These are ill health which is emerging at these young ages. Today in particular, I'm going to focus on the cardiovascular consequences, such as uh, coronary heart disease and ischemic stroke, and the endocrine consequences, such as type 2 diabetes. Within our research program, we've been looking at how childhood BMI, which is body mass index, weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared, a commonly used indicator of excess adiposity, at the age of 13 years, is associated with adult cardiometabolic disease. Now, if we take an average size girl and we compare another girl who's only 6.8 kilograms heavier, this does not necessarily make her uh, classified as overweight and is absolutely not obese. So this is a girl who's somewhat lower down on the, uh, the classification scale. But this 6.8 kilograms means that she has an 84% higher risk of type 2 diabetes, a 13% higher risk of coronary heart disease than the average size girl, as well as a 26% increased risk of ischemic stroke. Now, to be clear, all children have these risks, but with the excess weight accumulated, it's making them go higher. If we look at an average size boy and compare a boy who's only 5.9 kilograms higher, uh, heavier, and again, this is not an obese boy. This is lower down on the scale. This boy has a 49% increased risk of type 2 diabetes, a 17% increased risk of coronary heart disease, and a 21% increased risk of ischemic stroke. These alarming numbers are showing us that the origins of these diseases can already be identified in childhood. This excess weight in childhood is indicating this risk, which also offers a somewhat hopeful message because it means we may be able to act in childhood to prevent these long-term consequences. Now, it is commonly assumed, and incorrectly, I should say, that an obese child always becomes an obese adult or that an overweight child always becomes an overweight adult. This is not the case. If a child is extremely heavy, it the child absolutely has a higher risk. But otherwise, childhood body size is not a great predictor of adult body size. For example, by middle age, many people, irrespective of their child body size, are overweight or obese. Encouraging news is emerging. It's turning out that these risks of type 2 diabetes can be reversed, at least in boys. We lack information on what this would look like in girls, but there really aren't reasons to think it would be any different. If we consider a boy's overweight pattern, so if a boy was overweight at the age of 7 and classified as normal weight at 13 years and classified as normal weight at 19 years in young adulthood, by changing, by taking away this overweight status early in life, 
before the adolescent ages, there was no longer an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. If a boy was overweight at 7 and also overweight at 13, but no longer overweight at age 19, encouragingly this boy had elevated risk, it couldn't be removed fully, but it was still lower than a boy who was overweight at all three ages. This information is clearly showing that it is urgent and important to act upon childhood overweight and obesity at the younger ages. Prevention and treatment are key. The perspectives that we can bring are that overweight and obesity is a global challenge. All countries are touched by this, so it will take also a global concerted effort to help alleviate this challenge and problem. Clearly, there are numerous short and long-term cardiometabolic consequences. However, there's encouraging evidence that these risks can be reduced if we can help children attain a healthy weight before they enter the adolescent ages. This is an ideal target time for prevention because these children are in school, so they're also accessible. And evidence has shown that uh, treatment for childhood overweight and obesity are also likely to be more successful at younger ages. So in conclusion, it's clear that we need to provide further support for preventing and treating overweight and obesity in children. Thank you.